Week after week, we have worked to restore this old abandoned house and to fix the multitude of things wrong with it. You really can't get to the sink. You squeeze against the wall. You have a pressure tank under here. The water heater is next to the refrigerator. This stage of completion brings with it final plumbing connections and the surprise of discovering if the well works. I'm already banking on it and planning on it. That thing does not work. Really? Yeah. 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 This is the first official week of winter and it's coming in with a bang. So as everybody knows, everybody has an arctic blast coming. Then with the wind chills, it'll be around negative 20. This is a level of cold that neither us or our livestock have seen before. And we have clear skies coming tomorrow. It's going to be extremely, extremely cold. But the skies are going to be clear, so we're going to be charging regardless. So we need to keep this place warmed up with that heater so those things don't get damaged while we're charging. Today the plumbers are coming by to make all of the final connections in the renovation house. We have two full bathrooms, the kitchen of course, and a water heater slash pressure tank that all need to be hooked up. Josh is going to be doing the electrical side and the plumbing pros are going to be handling the water side. And then hopefully, hopefully we can get water turned on in this house. I can do the electric side of it. Yeah. Um, and connect up to all those connections too and pop them in. I'm very excited, so hopefully. <laughs> this is where we can get really tricky. Um, once we get power on that, the uh, well pump out there, I'm hoping uh, it works. Yes, but you gotta keep in mind, we installed the well pump in our house, so. Yes, if it doesn't, if work, it doesn't work, I'll yank it out, throw a new one in there, made the connections, and uh, we should be good. Yeah, I know a guy. I know a guy too, <laughs> so. Have you ever tried yeah. water at all here? No. What I could do is I could hook, put a hose on, yeah. there to the boiler drain of yes. the pressure tank, and I might just run a hose out here and just, just see if it works. run it and see if, yeah, because we know it works. Nothing in this house works when you bought it, so. Oh, exactly. <laughs> and, then, and you never know what the water is going to be like either. I know. Right? Yeah. But hey, okay. All right. Perfect. <laughs> nothing but surprises at this I, house, I'm not, you know? So I'm already, I'm already banking on it and planning on it. That thing does not work. Really? Yeah. 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 I remember we turned it on. Um, a little bit of water came out. I wasn't sure it was. I don't know. We had busted pipes if we wouldn't bought it. That's true. <laughs> so. Who, who knows? Buy an abandoned house, Josh said. It'll be fun, he said. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, exactly. It might fit back here. Probably not. We're probably gonna put it back here underneath. We probably need a deal. So we gotta move all this stuff out of the way so they can do their job. It didn't take me long to realize that you, uh, you gave me the dirty job. I did? Yeah. That's all existing stuff from the original oh, homeowner. Gosh. That's a cool pulley. I might have uh, <laughs> I'm tired of this thick. You okay? What's wrong? It smells really bad. What? Yeah, it smells really bad. What does? That rope. I'm in the owner's closet. The plumber's got the water here hooked up so we can get that tied in. Also, our switch, we got a little disconnect that goes to our pressure tank down low. That's all hooked up and ready to go. They told me, do not turn it on. <laughs> they want to turn it on to make sure nothing bust pops or anything because it's all their equipment, all their piping they installed. So if there is an issue, they can be here to fix it. So I gotta hurry back up, get this thing wired up to the pressure tank so we can get water going hopefully here in the next few minutes. Okay, it's 
Spook is off right now. You got 220 there? Yep. Okay. Well, we're gonna go up to the low, I guess. Bad news. Really? Yeah. We have power up switch. He's gonna go out to the wellhead and see what the issue is because uh, nothing's moving. Damn. Am I surprised? No. We're checking for voltage because uh, we have uh, power going to the switch itself and it splice right here comes from the house. And we don't know if it's cut in between somewhere. If we don't have voltage here, it means it's cut between here and there. And that being said, we're not surprised because the main service is cut in between somewhere too. So, uh, yeah. we'll have to see. We got power. Sweet. The ball pump's bad. Yeah, I mean, it's, it's running. Pushing. Yeah, so it's running. So the verdict is in, water is not turned on, and it mm -hmm. looks like the well pump is completely burnt up. Yeah, so the well, we put the amp probe on it. One leg is drawing like five amps, the other leg is drawing I think 12 and a half amps. And with the, the size pump that it should be, um, it should be drawing around uh, 6.9 amps on both legs. So, didn't work. We but were kind is. of anticipating this. Um, we definitely expected this to happen. <laughs> <laughs> Might not have been expecting that wall to be rotted out, but no. the pump having an issue, yeah, we kind of expected that. Yes. The thing is, is that the house, it hasn't been cared for in so many years until we came in here. So It's, it's been like, used like 10 times since 1996. Yeah, so. That's like 30 years ago. What almost. do you expect? Yeah. And I think that the good thing is, or the silver lining, is maybe that we have a touch of experience installing a well pump. We did it at our property. It's one of the first videos we filmed. Yeah. <laughs> Actually. <laughs> it is, and it's just kind of one of those things that's been the benefit of this entire yes. process for us is when we run into situations like this, instead of freaking out and kind of panicking, no. it's like, okay, we got this. Yeah. It's not Let's big, fix it's it. It's not a big deal. We'll pull the old pump out, throw a new pump in there, while we got water. Yeah. On the plus side, the well's not dry. So, <laughs> that would have been an issue. <laughs> This is not so much. We are going to take care of replacing the well pump ourselves. The plumbers were able to make all the necessary final connections on their end, and we plan to come back with all of the necessary tools and a new pump to restore water to this old house. But first, we need to turn our attention to our home and farm in order to prepare for what's being called a historic Arctic blast. This week while on vacation, you can be sure that neither Josh or I have turned down a single slice of cake or any of the good eats around us, which is why we were sure to pack our AG1 by Athletic Greens, the sponsor of today's video, and also the sole reason that Josh's digestive system is still on track. AG1 by Athletic Greens is 75 vitamins, minerals, probiotics, prebiotics, and adaptogens. It's basically a superfood complex that helps us to fill in the gaps in our diet, which we have a lot of this week, and also helps to keep our energy up throughout the day with just one simple serving once a day. Eight ounces of water, one scoop or travel packet, and we're good to go. A daily routine that's simple to throw together and easy to stick with even when we're not at home. It's the easiest way for us to invest in our health and support our energy, immunity, gut health, and digestion. If you're interested in checking out AG1, click the link in our description box below. You'll get a year's supply of vitamin D and five travel packs for free with your first purchase. This is a game changer for supporting your immune system. AG1 provides your body with everything you need for optimal performance every single day. Now let's get back to the ski slopes. That works. Eating. <laughs> I get two more bills, guys. Let's spread them out right here. Use those up and two more extra. Let's spread them all out right here and right. fill it up. It's gonna be extremely cold tomorrow. We'll get some extra bales down on top. They've got some deep bedding below that. So some yeah. extra calories, extra food. Lots of freshening water. And a little bit of warmth, hopefully. <laughs> As everybody knows, everybody has an Arctic blast coming. Uh, our temperature here is supposed to be around zero. Then with the wind chill, it's supposed to be around negative 20. So we're actually not really in a rush. We have a few hours with getting everything together and we want to keep make all the animals here comfortable as possible. Yes, right? and as safe as possible because yeah. for us, I know getting maybe like 
it feeling like negative 20 outside for some people is not a, big a deal. strange occurrence. For us here, where we're at in West Virginia, it is highly unusual, and our yeah. animals are not used to that type of weather. Correct. So we're going to be moving the sheep and the cows under the barn, making sure that they have plenty of bedding, plenty of food, and that they are as protected from the anticipated weather as we can possibly make them. We're going to want to leave some extra on this side for the sheep once we get the divider up. We're hunking them down, putting a lot of hay down, give them a lot of hay to eat, and hopefully they stay warm. And away from the elements, we're supposed to be getting 50 to 60 mile per hour winds, correct? Yeah. So it could get nasty. We're hoping for the best. We're going to be warm inside the house. We want them to be as warm as we are, as much as they can. Yeah. <laughs> I'm not bringing the cow inside the house. <laughs> so. so we'll just start with the sheep. We'll funnel them in here. Yeah. And then we'll do the cows second. And when they get funneled, we'll take the gate, turn the gate up on the side, lock them up, and they'll be locked in this area right here. Yeah. And then, like you said, bring the cows in next, close them in. A little bit of sweet feed, Leon's favorite. No graham crackers today, just the sweet feed and you know, he's like putty in your hand. So. Yeah, they're in. Yeah, so we're not so much worried about the sheep normally when it snows, when it ices, even when it rains because they're just so well insulated. Yeah. But it's the being wet and the drop in temperatures and the drop in temperatures being sudden that this is just the safest move for everybody. That's the best move. You don't want to be having temperatures like that and then dealing with like hypothermia in a sheep. It's not a good idea. Mommy, I love those views so much. They're so beautiful. Those are Leon's girls. Yeah. So a big concern for us is just how rapidly the temperatures are going to drop. It's not something that we have seen before personally. So not like this, no. Yeah. So we woke up this morning, it was snowing, had some ice coming down and it warmed up a little bit. It's a lot of freezing rain happening now. It's going to get up a little bit warmer tonight. Throughout the night, it's going to get to, I think, almost 40 degrees. But then five to six hours, it'll go from 40 down to one, two, three, zero, whatever. Something around those lines. And then uh, with the wind chill, negative 20. So it's a little wild. It's a lot. So it goes from real fast. So we want to make the animals under here comfortable and hope they're acclimated as much as they possibly can. Hey. Oh, you're so cute. Good. Go Y'all hear that? That's the cows pissed off being in the freezing rain. I expect we'll have no problems. They want to go to the upper pasture. They want yeah. to get some cover. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's not a dinosaur. That's Dex. <laughs> he never really learned how to move properly. And now. That's Dex, right back there. Where's she at? He's waiting for us. They're ready to go. Let's go, girl. So I'm just now remembering that uh, that ice storm the other day. We had a few trees fall, and uh, we had that one fall across the road also. So. We're gonna go ahead and try to get them around there. I don't think they're gonna probably they're gonna run around there and go up to the barn. So she's soaked, dude. She's soaked. She's not happy. Not at all. Poor she's thing. A <laughs> yeah, she's a very prissy cow. Come on now. Let's make us have that tree. Let's go. Come on, guys. Yep. Good job, Dex. Good job, good job. Uh oh, there you go. Pump those glutes, Aaron. They're going right to the barn, I'm telling you. <laughs> good job, guys. Woo! I'm out of breath. It went great, but I ran. So I was afraid it wasn't. Oh, where were you at, Josh? I needed backup. Woo! 
For some reason, I'm out of breath and you're not. Well, the five year old fell behind, so. You had the confidence that they were going to go in, didn't you? I knew it. I called it. I was worried, so I ran alongside him. I called it. I knew. <sighs> Look at her. She's stoked. She doesn't like being out there in this. Everybody's happy. Yeah, me too. I enjoyed it. What a good day, you know? This is the kind of stuff I live for. Chasing livestock and like freezing rain. Yeah. yeah. Going inside, making some homemade pizza. Very fun. Living the dream. I was gonna get skates, but it was just too slow because she Aww. is too fat. She's a fast girl, isn't yeah. she? Yeah. She's got those big long legs. Oh man. There she is happy. I'm completely happy. Oh man. Everybody and everything is soaking wet. I'm so tired. You did a good job. Everybody's so much happier in there. Stuff here, break it all up. Yeah. Yeah. They're gonna love all this hay. What we're trying to do is prevent the updraft. So the slots in the bottom, and air flows through. Be a lot of cold air tomorrow, so we're putting hay down. I'll bunker them down a little bit to keep them warm. Yeah, they'll be good. And they're gonna love scratch through it all too. So they'll be happy. And once everybody goes inside the coop tonight, we're gonna come out and we're gonna disable their automatic door. So everybody's. We're just gonna leave them locked in there. It's gonna be a day of frozen water, frozen eggs, frozen everything. <laughs> Girl, you look like you worked so hard today on your little farm. Do you know that? Yeah. <laughs> I go for a sip of sour. I think you earned it. <laughs> so, last thing I want to do is prepare to heat the powerhouse. We have a little heater that, that screws on top of a 20-pound propane tank, and the heater has three settings, a high, medium, and a low. Typically, we don't need to heat the powerhouse with the uh, all the equipment running, the freezers going, and everything moving throughout here. There's no reason to heat it because everything is insulated and everything puts enough heat off to keep these batteries warm. These lithium-ion batteries, they need to be able to stay above 32 degrees while charging. They can be stored at negative temperature, but to charge the batteries with the solar panels, it needs to be above 32. And we have clear skies coming tomorrow. It's gonna to be extremely, extremely cold, but the skies are gonna be clear, so they're gonna be charging regardless. So we need to keep this place warmed up with that heater so those things don't get damaged while we're charging. It gives me a lot of peace of mind knowing how prepared we are, especially with the solar system. Um, when we get the last ice storm a week ago, all of our neighbors were out of power for about three days. Uh, same thing happened this past spring when that nasty storm came through. Everybody was out of power for three days. We don't miss a beat. Um, so we got to protect these batteries at all costs with the heater. And so we're functioning like normal. So like I said, it feels great knowing we're prepared enough. We're going to have no hiccups or anything. We have uh, fuel for the uh, wood stoves, wood, to heat the house. We have this that's going to run all of our power throughout the entire house and everywhere. Even if power goes down across the entire area, we're still running full force. This is one of the huge benefits of living the way we live. We don't rely on anybody. We don't rely on a power company. We uh, have food that we grow ourselves. We have animals, we have structures for all the animals, and we're pretty much self-contained and self-reliant on everything we have with the wood stove, power, water, everything. And uh, we're ready. Bring that cold temperature on, baby. We're good to go. From going without running water and power when we first moved out here. Been without water for about seven or eight weeks now. To installing a well pump for our first time and turning on lights at the flick of the switch. Yes! We have power. We're so grateful for everything that we once didn't have and worked so hard to get. We did have a couple of uh, mess ups there. Yeah, yeah, we've been doing this type of stuff. Yeah. Gotta keep on going. All the ups and downs that led us to moments like this, where we sit surrounded in redundancy and independence, that give us a real sense of safety and security. We built this solar power array, this battery bank, this house, this food supply and firewood stock to invest in our future for moments like this. So we have full-time power now. This is a huge milestone for us, something that we have 
dreamed about and worked towards for a really long time now. This thing can run all of our AC and everything in the house without a problem. And when tomorrow arrives, we will feel confident in what we've established here, that we will be riding out this storm as if it was just another day. All right, girl, we're set up for tomorrow. Let's go inside and get warm. Yeah.